line up at the site of the Great Accord, celebrating the formation of the Advent Coalition. In keeping with their promise to humanity, 12 new gene therapy clinics will be opening in select cities by the end of the new year. Despite the attempted attack by fringe elements, operations at the new facility in Paris thankfully remain unaffected. In response to the unprovoked intrusion on the eve of our most beloved celebration, the speaker reaches out to us. A small number of dissidents again repeat the mistakes of the old world. Striking as we celebrate the benevolent savior who time and again offers only friendship and compassion. Yet these trivial actions could never break the bond between humanity and the elders. Keeping forces have already made several preemptive arrests of known collaborators. Advent again assures all citizens that today's celebrations will continue as planned. Perfect. The Advent administration reminds you to report all suspicious activity to your position. You were right. Definitely got their hands full today. Stay focused. Prep gate crasher. 60 seconds. Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm the Nerdbird, and welcome to XCOM 2! Don't forget why you're here, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave me a comment, tell me I'm good, tell me I suck, tell me what should improve, what needs to get better. But it's time that we pull the cactus out of our asses and try to take back Earth. And we are on Operation Gatecrasher, which our object is to blow up a statue. That'll teach those aliens a lesson. was a dum dum <laughs> first move of the game and I do a dum dum Anyway, for those of you that don't know what XCOM is, XCOM is a game where aliens have invaded Earth, and it's basically a follow-up of the last one, 
which was XCOM Enemy Within and XCOM Enemy Unknown. It's really the first two remakes by Fraxis. Games were originally brought out as a franchise by Microprose. Microprose went bankrupt. As a result, the license came up, Fraxus brought it, and they did a hell of a job. The XCOM franchise is probably my number one favorite franchise of all time. Closely followed by Dark Souls and Master of Orion. Which I'll probably, once the next patch comes out for Master Orion, I'll probably do some Master Orion gameplay. The only problem with a game like Master Orion is there are parts where there really is not that much to go on. So I think what I may probably do is, if I do Master Orion, is... I'll probably just have that playing in the background while I do like a vlog or something like or something similar. Basically, the whole premise of this game is the fact that we done dicked up, we done lost Earth, and as a result. Earth is now controlled by aliens. Okay, so we've got someone that can shoot. percent chance, not all that good, so when all else fails, throw a grenade. Now we've got that officer is gonna be coming around the side here. We'll see if we can get an ambush. This game actually has a really good ambush mechanic. If you set it upright, in the original game, if you went into Overwatch and there was one target, then every he's dead. up and cocked everything up. <sighs> so if we can't blow away your cover. Anyway, getting back to the ambush mechanics. In the old one, if everyone was in Overwatch, <laughs> I set you on fire. You burn. Anyway, getting back to that. In the original games, everyone went into Overwatch. 
and one person ran through, everybody would fire at him. And you could basically trigger the entire Overwatch on one person. But now each Overwatch is done individually, one at a time. So there's no more wasting the Overwatches. Which has opened up the ability to set up some really good ambushes. And ambushes are actually your best opportunity to kill things in this, due to the fact that if you set it up right and have them walk into you while you're still in cover, then you actually have the chance to take them all out before they can even have a chance to do anything to you. Which sounds good in theory. Unfortunately, theory, reality, two completely different things. As more often than not, you'll find yourself undercover. They walk into you. And you trigger them, and all your overshot overwatches miss, and then you are up shit creek without a paddle. And here we have the Avenger. The Avenger is a replacement for the static underground base that we used to use. Because we all know that that, although it was fun, it really didn't. Well, there's our first promotions. Sharpshooter. But anyway, give it. The underground base really didn't fit the whole rebel take back the world sort of thing, so we got the Avenger instead, which we'll have a look around in a minute. Heavy weapon specialist and a ranger. Primary reconnaissance unit, capable of moving independently in concealment while engaging enemies at close range. The ranger is, is actually my favorite class in this run up slash people across the head cut them in half all the fun stuff and rookie anderson came back in a body bag but what would XCOM be if people didn't come back in body bags one good thing that they did change in this game is you don't have to get live aliens anymore. That was some of the biggest pains in the ass in the last games, especially the original three. Those of you who don't know the original three, the original three were in the 90s. With XCOM UFO Defense, XCOM Terror from the Deep, and XCOM Apocalypse. And then they had the ill-fated XCOM Enforcer, which was basically a Doom clone, 
which they put out at the time when Doom and what else was out there? And Hexen, Unreal. <coughs> Basically, all the first person. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Basically, when all the first person shooters were out, Microprose decided to do their own. And they basically did the same when I think it was Wing Commander 2 came out. It was either Wing Commander 2 or Wing Commander 3. Microprose did. XCOM Interceptor in which you basically had to fight had to basically shoot down UFOs in space oh items recovered we got a officer and five troopers and this is the Avenger a repurposed alien transport vessel repurposed for us In this area here is basically the old ant nest base building from XCOM enemy unknown XCOM enemy within which they changed it from the grid based basically design your own base to this is how many slots you have and they did change it that you do not have to build the same facility adjacent to each other like you did in the other ones because scientists and engineers as well as rookies you get all differently here than you did in the old one instead of buying them well you still buy them but instead of have basically having an unlimited number that you could buy this one you more so have to go out and find them get them from operations so you always find yourself running short of rookies, you find yourself running short of scientists, and you always find yourself running short of engineers. Well, let's go see what our lead scientist has to say. Impressive, isn't it? Capable of generating immense power, yet completely harmless to human life. If only the same could be said for the rest of the aliens' technology, Commander. Dr. Richard Tigan, Chief Science Officer. I am responsible for the entirety of our research here, as well as the procedure you so recently underwent. Welcome to my lab, such as it is. I'm not sure what Central may have told you, but we found something while removing you from the alien stasis suit. A device implanted directly in your occipital lobe. Had I access to the equipment available to me during my tenure at Advent, I would already know the precise nature of its function. However, given time and your approval, of course, Commander, I assure you, I will find out. Which brings to light an additional point. Though aspects of this facility are indeed impressive, I am but one man. Were you to direct additional support personnel and resources to me, I could substantially improve the speed of all our research. A farewell, Commander. So, he wants scientists to improve research. So you can see we have zero scientists, which is weird because we have him standing right there. Apparently he doesn't count. I think we will go... Modular weapons. That way as we pick up... 
upgrades as we go along. We can pick up scopes, we can pick up stocks, we can pick up expanded magazines, we can pick up repeaters, we can pick up hair triggers. Then we can add them to our weapons, which will hopefully give us a little bit of a boost. Okay. Reworked your repulsors with some of the parts I salvaged from your old engine. Should fix that stabilization problem you had. Come on, Rover. It'll work. Commander! Getting our tech to talk to theirs is harder than you'd think. Lily Shen, Chief Engineer. At your service. You were probably expecting to see my father. In all that's happened, I'm guessing Central didn't tell you yet. He's gone. Dad gave everything he had to get us this far. This entire ship is his life's work. I know he would have loved to show you around the place himself. He used to talk about you a lot. You can be sure I'm ready to finish what he started. Might not look it, but in here... I can fabricate pretty much anything you come up with. And with a little more help, well, you'd be amazed at what I can do. It was an honor to finally meet you, Commander. And this is our lead engineer. Her father was our researcher in the last two games. We should see if any of the troops have been keeping count on alien kills. Might be a useful recruiting tool. Her father made sure that everything was running, everything was wonderful, and everything was good, and everything was built. Commander, good to see you on your feet again. Welcome to the bridge the nerve center of our operation. The aliens have our entire world in their grip. Advent controls everything. Government, communications, industry. Not to mention the military. And it's on us to take it all back. Resources and time are tight, Commander. It'll be up to you to decide how to best use both. The ship is yours. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the first episode and the start of us taking back Earth. I hope you've enjoyed your visit, I hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope you've enjoyed your time, and I hope I've brought a little bit of nerd to your day. Have a good one.